Welcome, Benji. Black Mason. Come on. Come on. Hey, everybody. I'm going to make sure you hear me. If I didn't have anything to say, I could have stayed in play. And the way y'all walking, you need to hear stuff. My name is Benji, and I'm an addict. And my home group is the Friday Night Live in Metropolitan Detroit. See, when I got to knock out these bottles, my foot was tired. I don't understand all this walk. I was tired. And I had walked all night and all day. I was one of these ads that walked from sunup to sundown. You see me at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I had my high beams on talking about what's up. See, I don't know if y'all walked that late in Charlotte. But I was at Greensboro, I got their dreams and dog alley. I understand, I, I was telling them there, I said, look at here, man, I can't do no walking up here all snake and alley. So I gotta stay clean. I'm happy to be here with all of you tonight. I said, I'm happy to be here with you. It's one thing to be here, but it's another thing to be here with you. God sent me and God sent you. And there's room for me in the circle, and there's room for you. And our fellowship is so wonderful that we've created a space for the addict that's on his way, or the addict that's on her way. So we got to fear, because there's some addicts that's going to do something for us that haven't even made their way in our life anonymous yet. And we just want you so scared you ain't going to get it. You're going to get it. Everybody else don't have it. What makes you think you're not going to be able to get it? <laughs> He's easy to get. When I came to Knock Hearts and I was with nothing but a wee wee. That's all I had. <laughs> and that was all you was going to get. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way. How many of y'all went to dance last night? I'm going to get out of for a minute. I went to, I went in there and started feeling these sex vibes and stuff. What the hell going on here, y'all? <laughs> and they were playing the song, uh, Take It To The House. I never heard that before. Take It To The House. <laughs> that was dancing with the girl and she was showing me her house. <laughs> And my mind said, I see your house. I start thinking about being the end dweller. And I eased on out the day. I almost blamed Charlotte, but that, that ain't Charlotte. That, that shit was in my mind. New York, California, you know, but I was gonna blame Charlotte, but I know that ain't Charlotte. But I also know I can do everybody in Charlotte, and I still got to go to Riley. Because one ain't enough. I can't get enough. That's one of the dynamics about addiction. You can't satiate an addiction. That's a pretty word, isn't it? What it means is that if you got an addiction to sex, you can't satisfy by having sex. If you got an addiction to food, you can't satisfy by having food, by eating food. If you got an addiction to drugs, you can't satisfy by using drugs. That's fundamental to our dilemma. We can't be satisfied. Some of us have been trying to get high for 20 years, ain't got high yet. 20 years, ain't got high yet. Newcomers, sit down and rest a while. Sit down and rest a while. We know you're tired. But we know the story. We know the story, this, that, and them. My mama put me on the pot the wrong way. We'll put you back together. Convention committee said we're bound for freedom. Said we're bound for freedom. So we're on our way. Now we got to figure out what we got to take with us. So just because you're bound don't mean you're going to get there. So a lot of addicts in this room is not free. A lot of addicts in this room not free. Addict told me, let me share this with you. I need to get on. Wonderful. Self-disclosure is an important part of the process. It's a very important part of the process, but it's not the process. You got to do more to get on it. That's just one principle. That's just one principle. 
Addicts in this room been sharing gun level for years, ain't got free yet. In Texas, for share, you share, I share honey. I share gut level. You're gonna have to do more than share. Just cause you sharing it don't mean you releasing it. See, I didn't come to hold you up. I ain't gonna hold you up. You got to get clean. Cause I need you. I need you. My new house is not gonna say to me, Benji, I love you. I got a job, and people on my job is not saying I love you without condition. I got a call, but that call is never going to say I accept you. I believe in you. Thank you for being in my life. I need you. And I got to help you stay clean. When I look into your eyes, I get a better understanding of me. God sent you to me so I can understand myself more clearly. When I look at your disease, I get a deeper understanding of my disease, because we got the same disease. We got the same disease. I might have one symptom, you might have one symptom. But we got the same disease. Some serious stuff going on here. Some serious stuff going on here. I know we clean up and, and get the bat in our eyes and get in and grinning. But these are precious numbers. Precious moments. Addiction is the number one disease in our civilization. The number one, look at this room. Thousands of addicts in here. Addiction is the number one disease in our civilization. And we meet, we meet under these conditions. What a privilege. It's a privilege to meet you under these conditions. We could have met in the alley. And it would have been on. It would have been on. We meet under these conditions. You may as well make your mind up right now. This is all you got. You need to look to the left of you, to the right of you, behind you and in front of you. This is what you got. That's it. We're going to be together. I'm going to be with addicts for the rest of my life. Addicts in these rooms cleaning up, I'm going to be with addicts as usual, but we're going to be together. We're going to be together. So I got to get a program. And you gotta get a program. I gotta get a program, and you gotta get a program. It was a hell of a hit getting here. I didn't think I was gonna make my way here. I didn't think I was gonna make my way here in desperation. I had lost control of my life. When addiction stepped into my life, I'm talking about addiction. I didn't, I didn't say the use when I started using drugs. I said addiction. I'm talking about disease that don't have no S. It's so big, it don't have an S. We didn't say we admitted we're powerless over our addiction. There's no S there. You better get with that. Why, why doesn't it say S? We admitted we were powerless over our addiction. The addiction stepped into my life, man. I, it took away my ability to choose responsibly. I ain't talking about the use of drugs. I'm talking about right now. What impulse am I dealing with right now? What urge is plaguing me right now? What am I obsessive and compulsive about right now? Because I can destroy my life and never use another drug. And never use another drug. You think that's it? That's it? That's just the most obvious symptom. So addicts dying in these rooms hadn't done, hadn't done no dope in here. Hadn't done no dope in years. I can't choose responsibly. Step one is a problem statement. Obsession, compulsion, denial, substitution, unmanageability. That's who I am. That's my truth. And it's been my truth for a long time. For a long time, that's been my truth. And I ran from Honolulu, South Florida, all over the country, running from that truth. And it just followed me. It just followed me. That's who I am. When I was 18 years old, come on addiction. I had a son. See, I can tell you all the stuff I did in the alley. But one of the things about Benji is, at 18 years old, I had a son. And his mother handed him to me. And I wouldn't hold him. I was mad with her because she got pregnant. 
right? I would know my own son. Now, there's that's, that's something there. There's something fundamentally wrong with that. That's who I am. I ain't got nothing to do with no dope. I lived with a woman for three months. So three months, this woman fed me. I slept with this woman. She sexed me. And I couldn't remember her name. It was only last year. It's taken me nearly 13 years for her name. Her name is Vanessa. I know her name today. But I've been waiting for a long time for her name to come back to me. How could you live with a human being for three months? For three months and not even remember her name? Say, sister, I know that he looks good, but can he be a part of your life? Probably even feels good. But can he be a part of your life? Some say, probably even tastes good. But can you be a part of my life? So you better look more than if it feels good, look good, and taste good. You better ask him, can he be a part of your life? I met a woman in Narcotics Anonymous, boy meet girl on NA campus. It's going to happen. It's going to happen tonight. And I'm not here to tell you to stay out. I'm here to tell you, you better get a program so you can survive anything that shows up in your life. Because she, she's coming. She's on her way. She's on her way. And you better get a program. You hear me? You hear me, young brother? She's on her way. You better get a program. When he gets he, he goes to get about God, sponsor, and everything. But I met her. I had 11 days clean. She had seven years. And the only thing was important that I was attracted to her. Who I was wasn't important. I didn't need to get honest with her. The only thing I need to tell her is, uh, let's do this. I have never harmed like that before. And I've never harmed like that since. Horrible story. Tragic. Tragic. But it's shaping my life. When you harm like at harm, you got to live in a man. You got to live in a man. So all I ask you to do is to just be careful. Be careful. We ain't as well as we look. We ain't as well as we look. See, I'm talking about before the dope. Before the dope. Seven years old, I was having sex. It ain't supposed to be that way, I don't think. Against my will. And I got up from that experience, and I went home, and I sat at the dinner table. Fifteen minutes later, and my family didn't know anything had happened. I ain't got nothing to do with dope. See, that's who I am. That's who I am. The dope showed up, man, I was happy. For a minute, for a minute, I was happy. I was on an aircraft carrier in the middle of the Mediterranean. See, I'm talking about forms that addiction takes. So the, the boat pulled in, we went out on liberty, and me and my wee-wee went to acting out. Me and my wee-wee. So when I got back to the ship, they said, you got to go, dude. You got to get up out of here. Show me right with you, strange man of rhythm. They shipped my ass out of there. I wasn't doing no dope. I'm running the same way as you're running as a newcomer. The same thing that threatens you threatens me. Not safe. I'm not safe. I still have the ability to harm myself, and I still have the ability to harm you. Shit. That's why I go to Nigga. I got me a program, because I, I know I mess up stuff. I drive 140 miles to me to knock out your numbers. Programs say I live in Flint. What I said my home group was the Friday Night Live group in Metropolitan Detroit. Because that's where I recover. And it's 70 miles one way. I make three meetings a week. 140 miles one way. Because I know who I am. Some of y'all doing all this walking. You're walking because you don't know who you are. If you knew what you were dealing with, you'd sit your ass down. <laughs> you knew what you were dealing with.
trying to find some deep shit and can't find. <laughs> we believe that as a fellowship, we have been guided by a greater consciousness. And we are grateful for the direction that has enabled us to build upon a program of recovery. So it's a lot of added. We, some, some of us still think we have an inferior fellowship. That we've been guided by a greater consciousness. Addiction. The alcohol is too limited for us. See, our problem is not with a specific substance. Not, not with a specific substance. So my mind is turned in the wrong direction. I thought I liked getting high. Hey, what I'm doing is just say we got high because we didn't have the power not to get high. So we were powerless. We got high because we didn't have the power not to. And once I took the first one, it was on. And I run from here to Riley to get a ball. None of y'all, whoever had it, with no problem. See, I had no problem then. If you told me you was a professor at Stanford, I tell you I was a, a literary student at Harvard. Let's get one. No. A real Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Say, we were two people. You go to Honolulu and they call me Puna. You go to Daytona Beach and they call me Scholar. You go to Miami and they call me Forster. Now, what kind of nigga would name himself Forster? <laughs> I got some problems. I'm talking about me. I actually told them people my name was Oyster. Now, why would I do that? And I thought that was so cute. So I remember one night being at the club. He said, what's your name? I said, my name is Oyster. What happens to you when you eat an oyster? <laughs> oh, I thought it was on. I thought I was player, player. When I came to knock out his numbers and found out I wasn't a player, I was a poodle. A little bit later, I'm going to get honest and let you know I was part poodle and part paw. <laughs> to get honest. But I thought I was player. Why, say, you didn't play nobody. Them women didn't love you. I thought y'all loved me. I thought I was it. My wife said, them women what didn't love you, they needed you. They were desperate. They had to be desperate to fuck with you. <laughs> and brothers, all y'all players up in here. So she had to be desperate. I wouldn't have won and I wouldn't have been attracted to her if she wasn't desperate. But I saw she loved me. <laughs> yeah, you got three or four, three or four desperate women that need a program, a knock out synonymous. <laughs> you don't have to be that way. Hey, I wouldn't bring in nothing to the table. Laying up in your bed, flipping your remote control, driving your car, walking around my own, dry, rusty, coins on my foot, walking on your floor, opening your damn refrigerator, think I'm running some. Because you don't want to be alone with my little wee wee. <laughs> Tell you that, you the Duke professor. I'm the Harvard literary student. You was a cowboy. You had your cowboy hat on, your cowboy boots. I put me a cowboy hat on, cowboy boots. Say, let's get one. That's what kind of attic I was. I worked with whatever was working. I looked at my little, my little brother around here switching this weekend. I was thinking, I would have got with you too. I would have saw you. No. Stand on up. You been quitted all weekend. Stand up. Let me tell you what I would have told you. I would I would put on my little took off my little drawers, put on my little tight jeans. I would have told you, won't you give me one, man? Don't give me one. Set you up. That little thing would have swivel up after I took that bar. You could have been the KKK. I would have wrapped the sheet around my black ass and say, let's go get one. But then I want to come to knock out numbers, and I can't get with you now. Now I got a problem with you. Now I got a problem with you. See, I ain't have no problem with you then. I ain't have no problem. Where Tom Cruise at? There he is over there by 18 days. Brother, white, white, white man right there. Stand up for a minute, brother. How many days you got clean? How many days? 15 days clean. And he thought he was Tom Cruise. Then he thought he was Tom Cruise. 
Matt Damon. Hard being a white boy in America, ain't it? We're glad you're here. So we gotta have some empathy. It's something else, boy. Nicholas Cage, you fuck around and think you Nicholas Cage if you want it, you're gonna end up right in Doc Ivy's number. See? When we say welcome, what we say is we understand. We understand. Full flight from reality. I was a nut in a rut. I couldn't be trusted. Just, just off the chain. And I came to Not Pies Anonymous and I found you. You're putting me back together. You're putting me back together. See, I can laugh now. But wasn't nothing funny when I dropped one. Have you ever dropped one? Have you ever dropped one? One time I dropped one, man. I dropped it, man, up here. And I couldn't find it. That's a, that's a hurt thing, ain't it? They drop one. Anybody relate? I dropped it, right? I couldn't find it, so I went to the store. I got me a 150 watt light bulb. For real. I put that damn 150 watt light bulb on and I couldn't find it, man. Look, I took the whole goddamn popper outside in the middle of the day. I had to find it, y'all. Have you ever dropped one? That's a hell of a hit, man. That's a hell of a hit. Thank you. <laughs> Identify? So I can get on in the process of recovery now? Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we admitted we're powerless over our addiction. Our lives have become unmanageable. Powerless. Used because I had the power not to. Came in not how to come out and found the power. Where's the power? In the steps. In the literature. In the fellowship. In sponsorship. In our meeting. Do that. While you're on your way to freedom. You got to take something with you. That's what you got to take with you. You got to get a sponsor. Somebody that believes in you. Not somebody you believe in. Somebody that believes in you. Because, see, I can believe, you can believe in me, and I don't care nothing about you. So make sure you get a sponsor that believes in you, that, 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 that wants this program, that's excited about this program, and that's who you run with. You got to take the three indispensables with you. You got to be open-minded. So when I say something, you just, if you don't understand it, just be open to it. Be open-minded. Stay open. God, I don't know, but I'm open. Be willing to do whatever it takes. Just like you was willing to do what it took then, you got to be willing. And don't fight your sponsor when he challenged your willingness. See, I got fired three weeks ago because I told the dude, look, he quit his job. He said, my car ain't working. I don't have a way to work. I quit the job. So I said, hold up, man. How, how far do you, how far is your job? From where you live? He told me seven miles. I said, well, why don't you walk to work? He wasn't ready for that. He, he didn't have that kind of willingness. He had conditions on his recovery. I'll work if you give me a car. I'll do it under these conditions. So he got his feelings hurt because I suggested that he walk to work. He was offended by that. He was offended. And I didn't mean to hurt his feelings. I was just telling him, what do you think would happen to you if you were to demonstrate that kind of willingness? What do you think God would do for you? But he was offended. But see, I, I, I don't know how to do it anyway. I told you I drive 140 miles to a meeting that knocked on synonymous. And I'm not sharing that with you to try and give you the impression I'm some hell of a, hell of a hit. I'm just telling you what the program of Narcotics Anonymous, how it will inspire you if you got one. My life is on the line. I do that because I'm inspired by your life. It's the most important room that I live in. Ain't no room like this room to me. Ain't no room like the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous to me. I was in the room with Colin Powell last year. I was in the room with the president of, of our country last year. I sat in the room with Miss America. I call the mayor of Flint, I call him at home whenever I feel like it. Senators, congressmen. 
That's why I didn't recover in Flint. Because I'm a businessman in Flint. I'm a community leader in Flint. And I'm one of these addicts that benefit enormously from the principle of anonymity. And I can't recover anonymously in the city that I live. So I got to drive to Detroit. Detroit. And you hear me talking about my wee-wee and this and that. I ain't got no business trying. I need a little anonymity. Because I can't take that shit to my job. <laughs> so I, I've been in some rooms. I get the opportunity. I was, in, I was on Capitol Hill last week. So I get some rooms. But ain't no rooms like these rooms. See, that's not who I am. I'm not a business leader. I'm an addict. That's why I go to meetings. That's why I'm still working the program of not like Anonymous. Said I was who they thought I was. I might just stay at home and, and uh, I got a pretty sexy ass wife. I stay home and be who they think I am. I like abandoned buildings, sleazy people, sleazy people. I just you just get me in there. I'm some front and some fleas right around some sleazy people. I just light up like a damn Christmas tree. Shit, oh man, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm serious. It's working with me, and you all are working with me. But I, I still want some things for me that ain't good for me. I still want some stuff that ain't good for me. Most dangerous part of me is my will. I had to get on to the third step. I had to find his will. I had to find his will. Because this is stuff that I want man to be in. And it's the stuff that you want that'll kill you. Just think about it. You, you know we got some stuff that feels good to us, but it ain't good for us. So see, I can't do my will. I eat every damn thing in Winn-Dixie. <laughs> oh, my will. Sometimes I want to do that. Sometimes I want to do that. Because I got to, I got to make a decision to live God's will I got to make the decision, and then I got to work the rest of the time trying to live that decision. So I, so I came to believe. The process of coming to believe was, was, it wasn't difficult for me. When you got your ass told out like me, when I came in the rooms and knock out numbers, I was sweetly reasonable. You could reason with me. Some of y'all we still can't reason with. But that's okay. That's okay. It's coming. Sometime before you ride that horse, you gotta break them, right? And we're gonna break. Addiction is gonna bring us to our knees. It's designed to do that. So I ain't even gonna ask you to keep coming back. You coming back. You coming back. You don't have nowhere else to go. There's nowhere else for us to go. There ain't nowhere else for us to go. And you gonna find God. All you got to do is keep using or keep coming. But you're going to find God. I ain't worried about that. It's not difficult to find God. It's not difficult to find God. Impossible to escape Him. It's impossible to escape God. Don't worry about it. Just keep using. Just keep using. We're showing me understanding. See, I thought all that six and seven step stuff was, was what was crazy about me. Not six and seven stuff. The stuff that was crazy about me, what I need to be restored to is this idea that alcohol is a beverage. See, that, that's what I need to fix. The part of me that associates using with pleasure. The part of me that gets a hard on when I see a joint. And then you're going to call me don't call me with a hard on somebody. You at the hotel room and you, you think about you. I tell you, get on, get off and come on to the meeting. See, I got to deal with that part of me that associates using with pleasure. Out of all the shit that happened to me and all the things that I know is going to happen to me and all the things that I've seen happen to you and I still want to get hurt, I got a mental illness. Something wrong with my mind. And that's the part of me that needs to be restored to sanity. So if that's where you're at right now, you need to ask God to give you enough sense not to pick up. Because this addict right in this room right now that don't have enough sense not to pick up. Don't have enough sense not to pick up. 
You don't have to be always serene and and highly evolved in here and have this expanded sense of awareness and all of that. But you got to be sick as hell to pick up. You shit. And that's what I need to be restored to sanity. And then I move on to my third step, where I make a decision to live a life of spiritual surrender. I'm talking about a third step surrender, the second surrender, a deeper surrender. See, in the first step, all I do is surrender to the problem, which is addiction, compulsion, obsession, unmanageability. That step one is nothing but a problem statement. So I surrender to the problem. And the third step, I surrender to the solution, which is a life of spiritual surrender, not self-improvement, not self-improvement. Now, what is the difference between spiritual surrender and self-improvement? We need to clarify that because many of our, member, of many of our members are living a program of self-improvement. That's when I go to Duke and get a PhD. And there's nothing wrong with that. We must do that. That's when I go to Ballard and get me a membership and I start working out. And I get me a few, uh, you know, gators or whatever, you, uh, whatever your stuff is. I'm coming up. Y'all say that in Charlotte, coming up. So all I've done is come to Narcotics Anonymous and take, 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 my house, my car, my relationship, all I think about is me. The N.A. opera, me, 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 me. So I'm experiencing a lot of outer fulfillment. I don't have no prejudice. I don't have a problem with the material world. Because I know that the material world and the spiritual world can coexist. So don't get it twisted here. I'm not, te- I don't, I'm not telling you not to have a material experience, or that there's something wrong with outer fulfillment. What I'm, I'm asking you to do, I'm trying to provoke you to make sure you understand when I literally say that we put our spiritual development first, and all other areas of our life will progress naturally. I'm telling you to trust that. I'm telling you to trust that. I'm talking about living, I'm talking about the difference between ambition, and inspiration. I'm I'm asking you to live a life of inspiration, not ambition. It's already here. I ain't got to go and create romance. I ain't got to, I got a creator. We have a creator. I don't have to create anything. All I got to do is position myself under the grace. It's coming. Christian, to live my life according to God's will, to live a life of spiritual surrender. Why? Because addiction is a spiritual problem. It is a spiritual problem. And only a spiritual solution is going to work. Only a spiritual solution is going to work. See, I know that. Because I tried all kinds of solutions. Intellectual solutions. In the end, for me, I had the Bible in one room. I had all kinds of scholarship. I was studying under multi-genius. Some of the best minds on this planet. And I had all of my academic literature. I was a graduate student at the University of Hawaii, working on a master's in criminology. And I was the brightest student in my class. But I couldn't stop using it. I couldn't stop using it. I understood every goddamn thing when I came to the When I got to Narcotics Anonymous, I knew everything. Or I thought I knew everything. And I knew quite a bit. I had a lot of intellectual knowledge. But this is not an intellectual problem. So it doesn't matter how wise you are. It doesn't matter how wise you are, or how many PhDs you got, or where you work. So I couldn't stop you. I couldn't stop losing. So I had to surrender to the solution, which is spiritual surrender. And then I had to go in at the fourth step. And I had to take a pencil or a paper or a pen, and I had to simply write. 
I and let go of how it spelled, what I couldn't spell, what I spelled, just simply wrote. And then I took it to my sponsor. And he looked at me and he said, I love you more. He said, I love you even more, baby. Because you trusted me. See, I trusted him. For the first time, I trusted another human being. I had done every damn thing. That was the only thing I had done. I never trusted another person. Never trusted another person. And I understood defect. And I understood that they were going to rob me of my freedom. And I started asking God to make me a harmless person so that I wouldn't harm you and I wouldn't harm me. And I worked through that. I worked right there and I still lived there. Now, when I went to the second step, I brought one with me. When I went to three, I brought one, two, and three with me. I don't need the steps. I bring them with me. Because I got to learn how to refer to the steps. The only step I'm not working today is four, five, and eight. Any given situation, I have to go when I'm, when I'm in doubt. I go to my second step and I say, you know, I'm not believing right now. I need to deepen my commitment to my second step. When I'm compulsive, I gotta go to my third step and recommit myself to this decision. I have to miss 10. When the opportunity presents itself, I gotta go to nine. When the pain comes into my life, it moves me invariably to a deeper devotion. So I gotta go to never. And I just ask for God's will for my life. And then I do my God's will for my life. So I'm living with inspiration. I don't go with an ambitious myth. I don't go with ambition. I don't have to ask God for anything. It's on the way, the text in the mail. God's got more. I know he has more. So I don't have to sit around begging. I don't have to sit around begging God. So I got a relationship with the step. On my way to freedom, bound to freedom, I need a relationship with the step. I need a relationship with the literature. I need a relationship with you. I need a relationship with sponsorship. And then the newcomer shows up. And I need the newcomer to show up for me. See, the newcomer is the most important person in our meeting. Why is he the most important person? See, we think, oh, newcomer, bless you, baby. You're, new. you're the most important person. You're such a baby. I'm a big boy. You're a baby. That ain't the spirit of this principle. The newcomer comes to save me. He comes to give me an opportunity to get out of my self-centered See, as I carry the program with you, as I share the program of narcotics with narcotics anonymous with you, it becomes more real for me. Seems like I'm giving it to you, but I'm giving it to me. At the end of the day, I believe in the program more deeply. I don't know what you do with it. But at the end of the day, I stay clean. I stay clean. And then you do your fifth step with me. And guess what happens when you do your fifth step with me? I get my self-acceptance. I am able to accept myself more deeply when you share your life with me, when you share your stuff with me. And I'm sitting there at your one-year anniversary. See? I'm sitting there at your one-year anniversary with my chair poked out. And you get up and pick up your chip, and you say, I want to thank my sponsor for the role he was playing in my life. And all of a sudden, I feel like a human being now. I'm feeling more human because you've given me purpose. You've given me an opportunity to participate in your life. That's what I need. 12 step, helping others is the highest aspiration of the human heart. Something we've been entrusted with as a result of a higher power working in our lives. Helping others is our deepest desire that you hear that? Now, I got to get a program to get there. That's what it's saying. Page 121. Helping others is our highest aspiration. That something happens to me when I serve you. See, I'm not doing you a favor by loving you. The best thing I can do for me is to love you. Best thing that I can do for me 
is to love you. I'm not doing you a favor. I'm so wonderful and I'm so spiritual. I do it because the check is in the mail. I figured out by loving you, God does something for me. Just like I know by rejecting you, I get constipated. But I think it's cute to reject you. Share with Wyatt that I was going to put him on the spot tonight. You all, particularly those of you that live here in the Charlotte area. Why? He's the product of your love. Look what you have made. Your love made him. He's the product of your love. And you need to look at this. And I told him this afternoon, I want you to start asking them, telling them to love somebody else the way they love you. Now what would happen if you start loving somebody else the way you love him? You're going, to create another, you're going to create another him in these rooms. You did that. And you ought to feel good about that. And there's a lesson in that. That's what happens when you love the addict. We get, I'm going to get better when you start loving me. But I'm going to stay as thick as you say I am until you start loving me. I'm going to stay thick. And until I start loving you, you can stay thick too. You can read all day long. And then on the other side of that is I don't need your love. It ain't your responsibility to love me. On one hand, I need your love because that's what's healing me. That's why I identify with him because I know what it means to be a member of Narcotics Anonymous and be loved. I've been getting love since the day I walked in this fellowship. And your love has made me who I am. But at the same time, I, I, I let you love me because I understand that it's your heart that's open. It's your heart that's expanding. So I, I, I watched how he allowed you all to love him. And I said, you know what? That's beautiful. Let them love you. The best thing they can do for themselves is to love you. It ain't about him. It ain't about me. But I also understand that, you know what? It ain't your responsibility to love me. Your love is a gift. So if you give it to me, I accept it. I receive it. But if you don't give it to me, you know what? I'm OK. I can't get upset because you don't love me. I just started doing it. I ain't been doing it but five minutes. I just started loving me, treating myself like a trash can all my life. Now I got a resentment because you don't love me. Something is fundamentally wrong with that. You gotta, we got to get with our sponsors and the men and women in our network so they can help us work past that. Just like I sit around in meetings and analyze your darkness and describe your darkness and point at you. Look, God, guilty, guilty. God don't need a police force. God don't need a police force. What I need to do is to illumine your life. If you if you in darkness, what I need to do is step into your step into your reign with my light. Since I'm so goddamn illumined, why don't I light up your life? You might see something if I put my light on you. But see, what it is is I ain't got no light. That's why you in dark. But then I want to come and share about. Where you at? Your disease, how your disease got you trapped. How your disease got you trapped. And all oh, Sally got Sally in the grill. And then I missed the hit, because you know what? I got the same disease Sally got. And if the disease got Sally in the grill, and I'm so busy looking at Sally, I'm going to miss the hit and realize, you know what? If Sally disease can do that to her, I better make another meeting. Because if her disease can take her there, and I got the same disease she got, and then it can take me there. You see? We're living our lives with enormous grace. I'm not going to hold you up. I'm going to get ready to close here. We're living our lives with enormous grace. It's about amazing grace. You got to take care of one another. You got to go back to your home group as soon as possible, or a group, and find out who set up the chairs and tell them thank you. Find out who made the coffee and tell them thank you. Find out who made the phone list 
and tell him, thank you. When the last time you told a trusted servant, thank you. We've been served here this weekend. We didn't do anything, we just showed up. And they had the place prepared for us. We strolled in these meetings, man. We forgot. Somebody cleaned the bathroom for many years, right? Go to a meeting of Narcotics Anonymous and find out who cleaned the bathroom and tell them thank you. We show up 30 minutes late, smelling good, looking good, strolling in there with this sense of entitlement. We so deep. And then we leave before the meeting is over so we don't know who picked up a white chip because we gone. Or we drop our wisdom and then we gone. Because we haven't learned to listen to each other. That's too much to ask. So we got to take care of our trusted servants. They have a 10% of them serving our fellowship. So at least we can thank them for serving us. I want you to go to a meeting as soon as possible. Find an addict that's in the rooms that feels as though they're all alone and convince them that they're not. Convince them that they're not. It's our responsibility. God didn't clean us up for us to get up here and celebrate ourselves and stand on top of our new car and say, look at me. The responsibility that comes with this clean time. It's a responsibility that comes with this clean time. To whom much is given, much is required. See, why it has a tremendous responsibility. Do you realize how much responsibility comes with me that you all have given me a microphone and you've given me this podium and you've given me this stage? I have a responsibility to live my life in a congruent way. It's a whole lot of responsibility. That's why I have to go to meetings and knock out the night. That's why I have to carry this message. That's why I have to respect you. That's why I have to celebrate your life. That's why I have to be interested in you. That's why I have to make your needs just as important as mine. See, I have a responsibility. But I think it's just about coming in here and building my kingdom. I think it's just coming in here and take. That's true for the first few years. Just take all you need. But at some point, you got to start giving. You got to remember what it feels like to have 30 days clean on a Friday night. You got to step to somebody and tell them, look, man, what's up? What's going on with you? These, these people are dying. Newcomers are dying. And we're coming up short. I'm talking about people with time. We're coming up short. We don't got our house. And we don't got our woman. We don't got our career. And we think that's it. We think now nah, the rest of y'all should step in and admire me. And oh, look at Benji. He got it going on. Then I'm see, I'm gonna get constipated. I'm gonna get constipated because all I have done is took and made myself wealthy and not out of synonymous. Because I just took, I'm still laying on my back, taking, calling myself a man. So I'm not in my masculine spirit. See, I'm not a wimp today. And I was a sucker for anything when I got to knock out synonymous. You heard me share that. It's a sucker for anything. And y'all put me back together. We have much work to do together. We have much work to do. Addiction is the number one disease in our society. The number one disease in our society. They're on the way. They're on the way. And they need somebody to have a program when they get here. Somebody that's not intolerant. Somebody that's able to understand unity. I need to be able to see myself in you. But I gotta have a program to see myself in you, to recognize that you are my mirror and you are my compass. See, as I go on the journey to freedom, as I'm bound to freedom, I need to take my mirror and my compass. The newcomer is my mirror. The old timer is my compass. Now I'm ready to go. You are a mirror for me to see myself. But if I don't see me and you, that's not a unity perspective. That's not a unity perspective. And they're coming to our fellowship by the thousands. 
We're projected to have 30,000 addicts at our World Convention next year in Atlanta. 30,000 addicts. We don't have anywhere else to go. Thank you, Convention Committee. Thank you all. You know, to think that I have, that you all asked me to come. You have to ask me. I was just in North Carolina just a year ago, nine months ago, just 20 miles away. I'm humbled by that. I'm humbled by that. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. From the bottom of my heart. See, I promise you that I'm going to continue to try to be a better man. I owe you that. I owe you that. I have many problems and many challenges. And I still need a sixth step. I still need a seventh step. I always need a sixth step. I always need a seventh step. But I'm in the process. I said I'm in the process. I didn't say it, it is a process. That's just a statement of the fact. That don't mean I'm in it just because I say it's the process. The question is, am I in it? Am I in it? John F. Kennedy died of what they call spatial disorientation. As his plane, he thought he was going up, but he was disoriented, and he was going down. Spatial disorientation. And if we're not careful, we can think we're going forward we can think we're in the process and be disoriented. That's why we need a compa. That's why I need a compa. See? Peacock walked in a circle all day. Walked in a circle all day. And at the end of the day, the peacock said, I've walked further than all of you. But in reality, he'd walked in a circle. Four years clean. Five years clean. Six years clean, seven years clean, walking in a circle. Be careful. Be careful with that. Be careful with that. Walking in a circle, disoriented. See, our life is better than it's ever been. My life is better than it's ever been. And I know that your life is better than it's ever been. But you know what? I sponsor men. And their lives is better than it's ever been. And you know what they tell me? Leave me alone, Benji. Why are you fucking with me, man? My life is better than it's ever been. But we got a progressive disease that's always moving forward, even in abstinence. So I can't stand still. I can't win today's ball game on yesterday's scores. So it doesn't matter what kind of program I had yesterday. I got to keep renewing and regenerating. I got to keep moving forward. Just not doing dope for us is a, that, that's such an awesome thing. If we're not careful, we'll get one step past using it and say, damn, this is awesome. See? One step past not using it. And we'll get satisfied with that. We can't get satisfied with that. We got to get as far as and away from our disease, man. We got to keep moving forward. And we got to go get the GED. And we got to go change those jobs. And we got to keep growing. We got to get a program. Because problems are coming. Challenges are coming. Our members are going to die. Our fathers are going to die. Somebody going to tell a lie on us. The lady at Burger King going to be too slow. And I got to have a program. What do I do? When, when you have betrayed me, I got to get a program. So we got to keep moving forward. In the spirit of Narcotics Anonymous Service, I salute you and God bless you. Thank you. Okay.